Hello, everyone, and welcome to Damn You Hollywood, the big summer wrap-up edition. Hooray! It's over! It's finally, finally over! Oh, God, it only gets worse from here. There is no reprieve. Just just none. Just none. Uh, anyway, I'm Robert Winfrey. Tonight, I'm be jo- um, once again joined by Mark Radulich. Mark, how you doing? Oh, I'm just ducky. I'm just wild about Harry, and he's just wild about me. I mean, I thought you'd be happy to get your kids back into school, so you don't have to deal with them all the time, but okay. You know, funny you should mention that. I was wondering how I was going to work this into the conversation, and you, my... I, my... I, know, I, I, know, I know you. You have to talk about your family or your job, depending on which, is, which has more stuff associated with it. School just started back up. I figured I'd give you a nice segue. You did. That was that was well done. Then you explained it like an asshole. But anyway. Um, it's only funny if you explain it, Mark. It's the opposite of that. So that my is, s- No, I, I'm pretty sure you're completely wrong. It's, it gets funnier the more you explain it. Right. So my son said two things today that, I th- that are very indicative of his personality. Both cracked me up and frightened me at the same time. The first thing was he walked in the door... And uh, tonight was my daughter's uh, musical theater class, so that everyone got home late. And my wife had a particularly trying day at work, so this was not going to be... She forgot to put the chicken in the crock pot. So this was a fend-for-yourself night, okay? That, that's, that's the setup here. Okay. So she took Yo-yos. The, so she took the kids to McDonald's, like you do, um, and my son walks in the door with his Happy Meal toy in hand and says... Look what I got. I got a Happy Meal toy that mommy hates. And he... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he was able to... It makes to... noise, right? That, that's, the, that's the gag here. It makes noise. Close. It's, it falls apart really easily, and then my wife spends most of her life trying to put it back together again as my son incessantly breaks the thing over and over and over. Just don't put it back together again. Uh... Come on. You broke it. It's gone. Deal with it. Apparently, it breaks within seconds of opening the package. The other thing that he said was, now, my son just started preschool, and we were both, we, my, my wife and I were both very nervous, because my son tends to throw a lot of tantrums, and he's very emotional, uh, and we thought, oh, God, you know, we're not, we're not going to get through the first week without getting a phone call. I mean, and I've made a joke that if he ever sat on a kid, farted on him, and said, does it smell, does it have a fruity bouquet, I would be proud of him, but... Realistically, if he does something like that, we're going to get a phone call, and that's that's going to be an issue. Um, so I figured we were, going to, you know, within the first week of school, he was either going to mis- misbehave, and we were going to get a phone call, or he was going to throw wild and sundry tantrums, and we were going to get a phone call. No, as it turns out, my son's a fucking angel. He's just the best student ever, and he does what he's supposed to. He does his work. He has no. T- he doesn't throw tantrums. Apparently, he's an entirely different kid in school than he is at home. So my wife worked worked with him on homework tonight, which is essentially tracing letters or tracing lines. You know, getting that hand eye coordination, the ability to hold a pencil, all all t- you know uh, t- things you would need to be able to do in order to proceed to kindergarten. And he was just kind of you know jerking off and not really focusing on what he was supposed to be doing, doing the exact opposite, apparently, of what he does in school, because I looked at his schoolwork, and he made the most beautiful A's. The A's look like they came right off a typewriter. They were magnificent. Okay? They were works of art. And then he, he's asked to reproduce the A's at home, and it's like, it's like graffiti by an illiterate kangaroo. Okay? It's just all over the place. So, clearly, he's not taking it seriously when he's at home, and at one point, my wife said to him, now, this is, now we've gotten past homework, you know, we've, we've straightened him out, we get it done, she puts him to bed, she reads him a story, and he says, I don't have to be good at home, I'm really good at school. Let me say that again. He, in his mind, in his, his specious logic dictated that because he's really good in school and that's what's really important, he can be a complete asshole at home. Which, kudos for, the, you know, having the kind of comfortability with both of us as parents that he feels like he can say something like that. But, oh my god, what am I dealing with here? 
You have you have profoundly failed this child, Mark. It, it's <laughs> I mean, look. As it stands, you're probably batting 500. All right, your daughter seems like she'll probably turn out okay. The the, the boy's a lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> just just sign him up for the military now and be done with it. I mean, how old is he? Six? Four. Four, six. Okay, you know four, what bothers yeah. me about questions like that? You had brothers. You're the older brother I, in, in the pack of I am brothers. The oldest, I am the oldest of four, yes. How do you... If I say the child's in, pre, in, in, in preschool, how do you come up with six, asshole? I don't know. Like, I don't have vivid memories of my brothers in preschool. I was busy trying not to kill myself as high school wrapped up. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You were saying? Uh, the point being, he's four. I mean, that's that's basically it. Like, you, you, the developmental, the, the relevant developmental stuff is done at this point. You've got maybe two years to refine the presentation, but you're not undoing any of the wiring that's already done at this point, barring right. catastrophic head trauma. Which is possible in this family. I'm not ruling it out. I'm just saying I don't advocate for it. I, I have no I have no issue with you with you swatting your kid every now and then. I have a minor issue with you causing brain damage. Because, <laughs> hey, those two things aren't the same. I just, I, um, I just thought that was hilarious. I don't have to be good at home. Mind, mind you... Son- I mean, you do understand that the logical extension of this, 20 years from now, is I don't have to be a decent husband because I'm an exceptional worker. Yeah, yep. I'm really great <laughs> at my job, so fuck you all and the horses you rode in on. But, you know, I tell you what, though, he may believe this, but he's hoisted by his own batard with this belief, and here's why. He spent most of Sunday crying outside my bedroom door for his mother, who refused to deal with him because she got tired of the hour-long tantrum and just hit, and decided that she was going to hide in her room like a battered housewife. And he, and, and he, and like Leonardo DiCaprio from the end of the Basketball Diaries, just stood outside the door wailing, I want my mama. And meanwhile, I'm on the couch watching old Ultimate Warrior matches going, you could hang out with me. And he might as well have just said, no, fuck you. I don't want to hang out with you. What I want is my mama and she won't love me. Well, to Uh, be fair, you were watching Ultimate Warrior matches. Standing outside of a door and screaming incoherently is probably a better use of time. uh, That's an argument. All right, speaking of arguments. Especially... The matches you were watching, because I saw that list of what matches you were watching. <laughs> uh, like, good if, stuff. There's an, if there's an appropriately curated list, maybe, but the dreck you were watching, like, no, I will stand and scream myself hoarse rather than watch that easily. God, it starts with WrestleMania 6 and goes down from there. <laughs> yep. All right, speaking of arguing, are you ready to talk about Hollywood? Sure. All right. Uh, before Successful, we... full of degenerates and uh, lepers, and we should just burn it to the ground. Thank you, John Lithgow from Footloose. Uh, but seriously, folks, uh, before we get into the money, which is most of what this episode is about, uh, let's talk about movies we saw over the summer that we never got a chance to review. Um, I don't know how many movies you got to. But None. I saw you have ruined my, you have uh, this show and your schedule have ruined my cinematic life. <laughs> really, like, my ability to see and enjoy film just torpedoed by this show. Just, but we didn't even go every week. We skipped a few weeks, and you're telling me in the intervening weeks you didn't go see something else that tickled your fancy, that you know juggled your balls a little. That is what I'm telling you. Yes, I I, I am so traumatized when. I do see crappy movies that you make me see and talk about. Then when I have a week off, I just enjoy the respite from the barrage of crap. <laughs> just sitting in a quiet room listening to the wind. Yeah, and I mean, let's also be clear. I don't think there was that much that interested me this entire summer that we didn't either talk that we didn't talk about. I mean, it, much as you know, I mean, putting shtick aside. The few movies this summer that I was potentially interested in, we did see and review, and the rest of it I thought looked like hot garbage. Well, then I'll make this quick. Uh, First one that I can think of off the top of my head 
was Ocean's 8, which was the all-broad version of Ocean's 11. I uh, saw that one with my wife, and both my wife and I said the same thing. They seem to be very much focused in, on that movie with, oh, look, it's all women, and there didn't seem to be enough story to carry a full motion picture. Yeah. Uh, can I just say briefly, in this same vein, to all the people who talk about and my dog freaks out when people mention crap like representation matters it matters only in as much as you shouldn't be deliberately exclusive right more than please please let's do something that includes everyone that those and those two things are not the same i i am not at all in favor of deliberately excluding groups necessarily from storytelling or you know, what have you that's again that is as stupid as uh, I mean it's logical inverse which is you know that would still be the same thing it's the logical outcome of only casting of only going in one direction with it I mean again it's stupid by contrast when all you when your thing is hey let's do a heist movie with all women and you think oh great and no one actually comes up with a decent story you get crap if you come up with a good high story and it turns out that as you have as you have come up with it and essentially written it, you know, these could all be female characters, so you go with all female characters, fine, who cares? But, I mean, and, and it seems like such a weird thing to, to point out to people, but apparently it does need to be brought out that just make a good movie. That's really the long and the short of it. <laughs> So, just to recap, um, Avengers came out at the end of April, and so we're... And Ed shot the summer in the head, basically. I mean... <laughs> but that's where we're, we're starting our bookend. We're starting it with the Avengers, which was at the ass end of April. And as I look through the month of May, we had Bad Samaritan, Overboard, Tully, Breaking In, Life of the Party, Book Club, Deadpool, Show Dogs, and Solo. You had a lot of stuff that was there to be sacrificed on the altar of Thanos. Mm-hmm. In any case, and then Deadpool. Nothing <laughs> other. You know, obviously, we covered Deadpool and we covered Solo. More on Solo a little bit later. Uh, I didn't see anything else in the month of May outside of what we covered on the show. So moving on to June. June, I actually saw a couple of different things. Um, the aforementioned Ocean's Eight, uh, but I also saw Action Point from Paramount, which came out. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Were you drunk? <laughs> Uh, little known, little known secret of mine. I have a guilty pleasure. My guilty pleasure is watching uh, Jackass. I didn't really make a habit out of it, but I've seen the I've seen most of the Jackass movies, and I laugh my ass off. I I, I don't feel proud about this. I'm I'm not. <laughs> or I, should you? But okay. <laughs> I'm not suggesting this is high art. Um, but seeing Johnny Knoxville fall off of stuff for some odd reason makes me laugh. So All I right, that's that's fair. <laughs> so this movie combined two of my passions: one secret, one not so secret. One passion is theme parks; the other one is you know guys falling on their nuts. Uh, and so, how was action? You're, you're a man of simple tastes, Mark. I appreciate it. <laughs> that being said, I mean it was your typical kind of schmaltzy underdog story. You know, you have a shit father who decides that he's going to, um, you know, create a theme park with, you know, with, with zero safety standards. And, you know, it's sort of an ode to, hey, remember, remember the days before the hippies grew up and became parents and ruined everything? Here's an ode to that. Um, but even in the movie, you know, at some at one point, the movie goes, well, we're going to make things even more dangerous for people to, you know, to compete with. The actual, you know, standard yeah, franchise. A legitimate park. amusement park opens up where people with, you know, quality attractions and right. safety standards, and so, he's like, "Oh crap! All I've got is more danger." Right. So you know, so that's sort of come so, fall into this pit of used needles. Right. So essentially, it's crusty land. What they what they're trying to turn it into, and when that doesn't work, and he has to have a crisis of conscience, and there's a whole subplot with with him and his daughter. Then they try to actually turn the park into something. You know, you know, realistic, and you know, at the end of the day, they had to blow the park up. Um, but you know, but the bad guys like got their comeuppance. Do. Yeah, like you do. 
But the bad guys got their comeuppance and lobster. Um, I didn't fall Lobster. Follow... <laughs> yes, it's an idiot's thing. Um, but that being that being said, you know, Action Point was okay. Uh, would I recommend it if you're, you know, if it ever comes on cable and it's not going to cost you any money? Sure, especially if you like seeing guys fall on their nuts. Um, talked about Ocean's Eight already. I also Hotel Artemis. It might have been better than I thought it was. I slept through most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that supposed to launch a franchise of some sort? Uh, maybe. It was uh, distributed by Global Road. Um, it had Dave Bautista in it. It was an interesting idea. Jodie Foster is, you know, a night nurse for criminals, you know, in the hotel sort of acting as her hospital. Um, Somehow it, it it's just like a crappy John Wick knockoff, but it's centered on the hotel instead of on the murder story. Pretty much. Um, like I said, I dozed off here and there, and then by the end of it, I just didn't care anymore. You know, I me- I mostly went to see it for the same reason I meant. I went. I meant. I went to go see Mile Twenty Two. More on that in a minute. Um, somebody I like is in it. In this case, it was Batista. So please tell me Mile Twenty Two is as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, again, for the parts that I was awake for, yeah, I, I, it's it was meh. I, mean, um, I felt I felt bad because I actually like. Oh, and you will not know this because this is not relevant to your interests, but the like. Uh, Laotian guy or the Thai guy that is that yeah. they're trying to protect. He's Filipino, by the way. In the, Filipino. In the movie. Sorry, I, I forget. I he probably is in real life too. He's awesome. I've seen him in a, a bunch of uh, foreign action martial arts films, mm-hmm. and I love that guy. He's great. He's in. I think it's. Uh, I can't remember if it's The Raid or Attack of the Block, but one <clears> of those two. Uh, again, he's awesome. I love his stuff and. When I saw it was him in that, I went, oh, I have half a reason to see this. But then there's Mark Wahlberg and Ronda Rousey and I forget. Wasn't it Adrian Pilecki or whatever who was the other chick? Yeah. Uh, Ronda Rousey yeah. was the reason I went to go. I went to go see it for two reasons. One, I, ha- I'm on, I, I have the AMC A list. I feel like I need to go see something. And two, Ronda Rousey. Um, let me, let me not co- an acceptable reason to go see a movie, Mark. Yeah, she blows herself up. Um, let's finish up. Let, oh, let's like- get to mile 22 when we get to August. Uh, right. So that pretty much wraps up June. I wanted to go see Superfly, just didn't have time, uh, and apparently it bombed. I, I would have gone to see Sicario. I might have actually suggested that we review it, but I think I needed the space for a TV review, number one. M- number two, never saw the first Sicario, didn't know if I'd be missing anything. Uh, the first Sicario is pretty good. It's a lot... Um, again, it's the same group that same like director and writers who did uh, there's an unofficial trilogy that starts with Sicario goes to hell or high water and ends with Wind River mm-hmm. and they're uh, I enjoy all of those to varying degrees I think hell or high water is probably the best of them so in July I want I, I was supposed to see the first purge but the girl I was going to go with ended up canceling our date so uh, and, and so at that point there went my interest um, I wanted to see sorry to bother you you know that was right up my alley but unfortunately, it was like out of theaters before I could get to it, so I'll have to wait for that to come on video. Hotel Transylvania 3. I actually did the Amazon Prime Adam Theater preview for that one with my kids and a friend of the family and uh, their kids, their kid. How uh, was that? Because we almost reviewed it. We did. And I'll, I'll tell you this. This is, this is a franchise with diminishing returns. And they are they are real. I mean, here's the thing: the kids really enjoyed it. Like, it, it, it's hard for me to negatively review this movie when I know I'm not the target audience. And it, I do on, not have that problem. I, on, I don't know why you have that problem. That's not on, a problem. Well, on an objective quality level, the story is lacking. Um, I think that's fair to say. But but for the most part, you know, the gags keep coming. You know, there's funny there's funny visuals on the screen. The, the characters are, I think, engaging if you're a child. I mean, the adults that saw it with me thought it, you know, were entertained and thought it was funny. So it's like, okay, on the one hand, it's kind of a shitty story. It's not very well written. On the other hand, everybody who was in the audience was wildly entertained. I'm trying to negotiate those two things. People like shiny things, Mark. It doesn't mean they're good. Have I told you that I saw Action Point? Yes. <laughs> you also did not try to defend it. This is true. Like, you, you just said, look, if you like people falling on their groins, 
then action point is for you. If you like shiny objects and stupid accents and brightly colored things, you will probably enjoy the third Hotel Transylvania. If none of those things apply to you, you have to look at it from a quality standpoint. It's terrible. Now the next movie that I want to review that we we didn't it wasn't even on our calendar, uh, and it's not something I even saw. So I'm gonna farm this next review out to my wife who took my daughter to go see it after we made her watch the first one. Uh, so here's Melissa Radelage with a two minute review of Mamma Mia. Here we go again. There was singing. There was dancing. There was innuendo of sex. A little uncomfortable with your seven-year-old. But it was fun. It was cute. Quite frankly, it was for the old people. Thank you, Melissa. That wasn't quite two minutes. There's not that much to say about it. <laughs> was it, was it. Do you think they even should have bothered making a second one? No. Okay, not enough story for a they second movie. They shouldn't have made no, the first one. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if you caught that. You can go now. Thank Thanks. You. You're dismissed. Thank you. Um, yeah, she, she was like, there wasn't enough story for a second, for a second movie. They shouldn't have There's bothered. barely enough story for a first one. There really... Oh, my God. If it wasn't for the... That movie would be five minutes long and have no plot if it weren't for the singing and dancing. Like, well, I just rewatched it again. And don't get me wrong. I like ABBA enough, you know, and the scenery's pretty, and the three male leads are fun enough that I can get through it. But, like, re-watching it again with a critical eye, I'm like, wow, this movie has no fucking plot. This is all singing and dancing. And the lead can't act for shit. At least not in that movie. Um, Equalizer 2, I had no interest in. Unfriended Dark Web, no interest. Teen right. Titans Go to the Movies. Uh, my wife and I took my kids to that. Teen Titans Go to the Movies is really funny. And it works as a parody of the superhero genre and I think taken in with that frame uh, it's really enjoyable like if you're looking to really poke fun at the superhero genre especially the DC cinematic universe and to a lesser degree the Marvel cinematic universe uh, you don't have to poke fun at the DC cinematic universe <laughs> it, it's self parody well the Teen Titans go to the movies it is you know, it's, it's, it's amazing that the writers who worked on this movie work for the same company that puts out the live action <laughs> movies because it's like they're so talented you know there's the, it was such biting satire you know of where we are with film and superheroes and yet when you go to the live action one it's like there's you know they oh, have dude, no self awareness <laughs> at all uh, oh surfer bro aquaman oh god <laughs> that movie's going to be so bad my, uh, I, so bad. This was yet another one, much like the Lego Batman movie, where I was the one I was laughing the loudest in the entire theater. Um, this this brought tears to my eyes, and I'm like not a huge fan of the Teen Titans Go show. My kids like it a lot; they they'd be the ones to watch it. But uh, this was a fun time at the movies for for the whole family. Uh, that is the month of July, and finally, we get to August. Um, we have the Darkest Minds, Death of a Nation. Uh, Christopher Robin, which we reviewed in The Spy Who Dumped Me. I saw none of those, uh, except for the obvious one. Um, Black Klansman, I did see. And it was okay. I, I like Spike Lee movies for the most part. Um, I know we had the discussion over, can't you know, can you... you name... How you just skipped a decade of his career and that preserved your enjoyment of his Yeah, abilities. apparently I stopped, I stopped before he started to stink. Um, yeah, you really did. When we that was what shocked me when we talked. We're like, no, I like Spike Lee. Like, really? Okay, no, I, I like this, like this, like this. Okay, what about this? You know, these like six movies over this ten year period. Yeah, I didn't see any of those. Okay, right. that yeah, makes the, sense. The, the last one I saw was Bamboozled, and it's kind of in, it's in my top twenty. I really love that movie, but I haven't seen anything after that. Uh, Black Clansman was okay. I mean, it was a, it was a fun sort of period era cop movie that deals you know that deals with racism. Yeah, it was fine. Like I, like I, it's getting a lot of attention, and I don't exactly know why, except for, you know, people will sometimes give things attention that they don't necessarily deserve because, you know, reasons. Uh, did not see Slender Man. Yes, I, I am very familiar with that phenomenon, Mark. <laughs> um, and we have Dog Days uh, and Alpha, which I had no interest. I'm really surprised you didn't go see Alpha. Um, thing is, you're a dog person. One of my brothers did and seemed to enjoy it. 
So I saw Mile 22. I mean, we talked about this briefly. And th- this was one where I nodded off for like, for like five minutes and I feel like I missed way too much. And at that point, all the movie is is either fighting or Mark Wahlberg talking fast or Mark Wahlberg talking fast over fighting. Mark Utterly Wahlberg lost me. I had no idea what was going on. And in the end, everyone died. So, mile, well, that's good. Mile 22. Wait, 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 wait. Mark Wahlberg dies. No, I think he lives, but he's like the only one. Damn it to hell. You can't get my hopes up like that, Mark. <laughs> uh, my parents saw Crazy Rich Asians. I'm not going to pitch it to them. They're not here. But my, my father says it was amazing, and my, my, now my wife wants to go see it. Uh, I told her she's going by herself if that's the case. And uh, finally, we are not going to review it, but I'm going to go see The Happy Time Murders this Friday. Because I, ref- I, I absolutely <laughs> would never, under I have any circumstances, watch that movie. Two words for you: Muppets ejaculating. Yeah, <laughs> and no, no, no. And somehow that will be less offensive to my eyes and sensibilities than the continued existence of Melissa McCarthy. Um, if it matters to you at all, and this is the last thing I'm going to say before uh, we, we start talking about the money, I am going to go see Operation Finale, which is. Uh, Poe Dameron goes to chase down the last Nazi. Uh, okay. Are you aware of what Ben op- Kingsley? Ben yeah. Kingsley playing a Nazi. I, the, I, I kind of want to see it just for Ben Kingsley's, you know, being a giant bag of crap like that. You know, I I would have expected a little. Not not that I need your praise, but considering you know. Uh, your you delight in insulting me on an ongoing basis, I would have thought here is an opportunity for you to be the big man and give me some praise here. I'm going to see something that uh, I'm going to see something like Operation Finale. I like I'm waiting for tickets to go on sale for this. And realistically, had you referred to the actor as the actor rather than by a superficial, relatively <laughs> useless character that he plays in a dying franchise, I might have. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For the record, the actor is Oscar Isaac. I know who the actor is. It's just won to... an Oscar. I don't care. I'd rather call him Poe Dameron. Um, all right. So with Let's that... Because it sounds better to your horrible, horrible white mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say anything even... Which is somewhat ironic because Oscar and Isaac being, you know, very Anglicanized names anyway. <laughs> all right. Speaking of white mouths, here comes the money. <laughs> Those here two things are not money. related. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. All right. Here's where we stand. This is it. Top a pile of burning, bu- a type of, a, <laughs> top of burning building waiting for it all to come tumbling down. Uh, as of this recording, here's where we stand worldwide. The Avengers, number one, with over $2 billion. Black Panther, Woo. number two, with $1,346,000,000. Jurassic yeah. World, $1,290,000,000. Incredibles 2, $1,121,000,000. Those are the top four movies that have made a billion dollars this year. Nothing else is crossing the billion dollar mark. Nothing. Are we sure about that? Aquaman and Bumblebee. Neither of those, you're right. Neither of them. <laughs> that's it. That's. I mean, maybe Wreck It Ralph. Maybe, but that's, that's maybe the, that's, Wreck It Ralph might. That one might. Yeah, but that's about it. That's all we've got. Um, uh, in fifth place is Deadpool two. And so, if again, and we, I know we've said this before, but it bears repeating. If you're wondering about why uh, the cinema is in the state that it's in, your top five movies are one, two, three. Uh, Marvel movies, four superhero movies, one, two, three, and they're all four sequels. sequels. Well, I wouldn't call Black Panther a sequel. Four sequels, <laughs> and every single one of them is a franchise movie. Three of them from Disney. Yeah, guys, look, I- I've I've complained about the state of cinema, and you should too in some respects. But let's also not have any. Let's not delude ourselves about why, okay? The why is not in question here. (laughs) It's going this way because there are financial realities to filmmaking. And if Avengers 2 can make $2 billion, let's try to replicate that. Or if you're an intelligence studio, maybe try to counter-program it. But generally speaking, this is the direction the culture's moving. 
of course we're going to keep going that way. We have to make money. That's that's not an, like I may not like it, but please let's not pretend that there's some ambiguity about why this is happening. Uh, rounding out the top twenty. We have Ready Player One, Operation Red Sea, Detective Chinatown, Mission Impossible, uh, if we didn't bring it up last week, has risen to number 9, knocking Ant-Man and the Wasp to number 10. Uh, Sony's highest grossing movie this year is Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation, with $426 million, uh, followed by Rampage, and knocking Solo, A Star Wars Story, down to 13, followed by Fifty Shades Freed... Which I'll did be we a... ever get some? Did we get some kind of clarification about that movie I referenced last week that that I saw in the top ten? No. Um, Monster. Gonna, let me look up and see if it's still there. I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna keep reading. Monster Hunt Two. Go ahead. Peter Rabbit, uh, another Sony children's feature, which is their second highest grossing film this year. A Quiet Place. Mamma Mia! Here we go again. The Meg, which is currently at three hundred and eighteen million, and finally Skyscraper. Uh, some earlier top ten movies that have been knocked out, knocked out of the top twenty were Pacific Rim, uh, Tomb Raider, and I think that's a good. Christopher Robin is still struggling. It's currently at number thirty-seven between Overboard and Sherlock Gnomes at ninety million dollars. Uh, so that's where we are right now. Now, as far as... There are a couple of things I want to talk about as far as the studios go. According to Box Office Mojo, in terms of... Huh. I, okay, for the record, I cannot find a further confirmation of, what, of that thing that I brought up last week, so I will not be referencing it again then. All right. Uh, moving on. Good to know. Uh, so Variety rated the studios based on the success of their summer releases or failures of their summer releases. We'll get to that momentarily, but I just want to talk about market share right I, now. I, I don't want to give Variety the time of day. They're terrible. <laughs> oh, really? I wrote notes on this. Um, all right, so according to the Box Office Mojo studio market share, Disney's in number in, in first place with 33.7% of the market with 10 movies tracked and 7 movies released in 2018. So even though... Two of their movies this year are the only two movies listed on the Wikipedia page for biggest box office bombs. They're still the number one studio with the largest market share by a country mile. Take that, (laughs) other studios. Uh, Universal, which because they've got the Jurassic Park franchise and a couple of other big hit ones, uh, usually tends to tends to roam around the second or third place, sometimes even first place, depending on the year, is in second place with 13.4% of the market share, um, 12 movies tracked, and 10 of those were in 2018. And just, you know, if you if, just to tell you, Jurassic World is pretty much the reason why, because outside of that, their, big, their other two big hits were Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, and Fifty Shades Freed. Uh, yeah, not nah, there's that's not a whole lot there. Uh, in now in third place is Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers' entire reason for being as high as it is is because of the volume of movies it's uh, the volume of movies it releases. Not a lot of them were were huge successes. In fact, by and large, many of them weren't. Uh, you know, they were middling successes at middling successes at best, with the exception of Ready Player One. However. Again, they we're talking like twenty seven movies tracked. Okay, twenty seven movies tracked. That's three almost three times as many as Disney. And sixteen of those were in twenty eighteen. So there you go. And they're in third place with eleven point two percent. Uh then we have Sony at nine point five, Fox at nine point three because Fox has just given up at this point. Well, they just I mean they literally just sold off like all of their entertainment assets. Well, not all of them, but the majority mm-hmm. of them to Disney anyway. Like they don't care. Um and then Paramount, probably the next studio to be bought by Disney at the at the rate they're going. And then uh to round out the top ten, you have Lionsgate with three point three percent, STX Entertainment, 
uh, who bring you those bad mom movies at 2.1%, uh, Focus Features at 1.5, and Fox Searchlight at 1.4. So that's where we are. Now, according to Variety, they, again, they rated the movie studios based on the success or failures of their summer features. So you want to hazard a guess as to the letter grade for each one of these? Let's start with Disney. What do you think they gave Disney? Uh, oh, ro- uh, and I mean, if you go by video game terminology, it's an S. Like, it, it's above an A. It is the superlative. <laughs> like, the, there is no comparison. <laughs> they gave it an A-, minus. and pretty sure the minus was because of Solo. Ah, oh, which is just so stupid. Uh, Fox got a C+. Plus. That's generous. Paramount got a B. Yeah, that's about right. Sony B minus. That's generous. That's real generous. Universal B plus. That's about right. And Warner Brothers, they gave a B. Now here's the movies that they tracked. Because again, oh no no, Warner that that is not an accurate representation of Warner Brothers. <laughs> um, so Disney tracked uh, Incredibles two, Avengers, Solo, Ant Man and the Wasp, and Christopher Robin. Uh, Christopher Robin financially is not doing great, and obviously Solo was a you know was a was a huge box office failure for them, you know in terms of actual you know, ticket sales, making back their budgets, etc. And well, again, like that was also caused by them shooting the darn thing twice and right. horribly disproportionate expectations about what about what that film was. I, I went into several rants about this. I'm not going to keep repeating myself, but. They can afford the occasional serious miss. You know, I think it was, I think last year or the year before that, they had a tremendous year. And and that was another one where they, they had a couple of box office failures and they were still the number one studio in the world. So, you know, a lot of these doom and gloom articles about Lucasfilm and Disney, it's like, mm, not so much. Uh, and again, I mean, let, let, let's ju- just a quick postmortem on, Star- on Solo. Here's the problem. They pushed this thing through production, even though it was mired in problems. And I think had they decided, you know what, maybe we're not going to release it this year. Maybe we're going to go back to the drawing board, you know, and, uh, you know, rethink what we're doing here. Maybe they come up with a better product. I think also... And this is worth talking about. I think there was a... You're talking about the fan base. People are like, well, nobody wanted a solo movie. Nobody really wanted Rogue One either. But Rogue One looked awesome, at least. And, you know, and it ended up giving a lot, you know, a lot of positive fan service for your hardcore adult Star Wars fans. I mean, let's face it. Darth Vader murdering a ship full of rebels. Uh, you know, when, you, you know, when you're in a 30 or 40 year old man, looks fantastic. <laughs> you know, this is the highlight of the movie. I think the problem with Solo was they had they had, they had trouble satisfying any audience with this thing. Uh, they had two different directorial visions. Um, they spent way too much money. Obviously, that's the biggest problem. Because again, had Solo had Solo exactly as we saw it been a hundred and fifty dollar, a hundred and fifty million dollar movie, it's a success, and we're not having this conversation. Uh, so that's a problem. But I think the other thing is people coming out of the Last Jedi who are right or wrong, unsatisfied with how that movie went down, just essentially wash their hands of Lucasfilm. So, you know, we'll see what happens after the next one. I'm sure, you know, let's put it this way. There'll, there'll be more of these anthology movies that will follow episode nine. And if episode nine makes people happy, they'll come back for any of the other anthology movies, regardless of whether or not they quote unquote want them. So I'm not real particularly worried about that. You know, Solo's yeah. Solo's one of those weird stories, you know, that r- filmies like to t- will we'll talk about, but uh, but ultimately it won't mean anything in the long run. Uh, Fox tracked Deadpool two, The Darkest Minds, and Super Troopers, and that's why they got a C plus, by the way, because they had one hit movie and nobody saw The Darkest Minds, and nobody saw Super Troopers. Yeah, they're. Uh... We're still pretending that like their mediocre take on the X Men franchise is a thing. I mean, it's a thing for another eight months before <laughs> all of their assets are finally transferred over. 
Um, Paramount had two offerings. One was a smash success. We don't know why, but it was, and that was Mission Impossible. We're pretty sure this is just... We're pretty sure the critical reviews were carried over by, you know, people wanting to bask in Tom Cruise's shadow. Uh, But uh, the other one was Book Club, which I guess women saw. (laughs) I... I imagine it just skewed older, mm-hmm. as opposed to you know being just women. I know that I think my dad saw that one and enjoyed it. I don't know if my parents did or not, I, and I don't have a production budget here. But it made sixty eight million dollars uh, here in the states. It wasn't released worldwide, and I'm guessing I can't imagine they shot this for very much money. So you figure one would assume you figure if they shot it for if they shot it for a nickel. And, you know, and they make ten cents. Everyone's happy, you know. Uh, that being said, we're moving on. So two releases and Paramount gets a B. Good stuff. Uh, Sony, Superfly, Sicario, Day of the Soldado, The Equalizer Two, Hotel Transylvania. Well, Hotel Transylvania was their runaway hit. Nobody saw Superfly. Um, so I think Sicario did okay. The Equalizer did okay too. So there you go. Yeah, they did all right. And then they're going to put all their eggs in, in the Venom basket and watch the basket catch fire. Oh, yeah, that is that is such a... <laughs> that's a dumpster fire. Uh, Universal th- Universal is thanking God they had the Jurassic World franchise because other than that, they had nothing this year. They had Breaking In, which nobody saw, and who cares. They had Skyscraper, which was a bomb. Uh, they had the first purge, which I guess was okay, and then they had Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Uh, Warner Brothers, Ocean's Eight, Tag, Life of the Party, Teen Titans Go to the Movies, Crazy Rich Agents, and The Meg. I don't think there was like a high budget movie in the bunch here, and so you know if they all do fairly well, you know I would imagine that's why they got a solid B. I mean, not a runaway hit among them, but anyway, with the possible exception of The Meg. But all solid outings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, like you said, nothing great, but... So that's it. That's all I got. You, um, so I wanted to say before, there were, right now on the Wikipedia page for the biggest box office bombs, it's, there are two movies and both of them are Disney. You have Solo, A Star Wars Story, which was a nominal estimated loss of 50 to $80 million dollars. And our favorite movie of this year, A Wrinkle in Time. Oh, piss on that movie. <laughs> Unless with, it's on fire, then just let it burn. With a nominal loss of 86 to $186 million. And yet they're giving the director of that movie a Marvel movie to direct. And, and possibly, Which one? And possibly a DC movie. Oh, that's so stupid. That is such back padding, look at us and how inclusive we are, crap. You made a terrible movie that bombed. You should not be rewarded for this. I mean, what were they talking about giving her? New gods. <laughs> sure, just, just so that property can die. <laughs> um, I don't. So I don't know necessarily about about the Marvel one. Um, I thought I'd heard that she might be getting a Marvel movie, but yeah, it's the New Gods was definitely the one I was thinking about. Look, sure, let her screw that up too, and then. <laughs> And then by that point, Warner Brothers will have to sell everything it owns to Disney, and we can just move on with our like. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I shouldn't be that hard on New Gods because it's not that bad a story. It's not great, from what I remember. But ugh, just what are we doing? Seriously, what are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. You, clearly, that studio just doesn't know what it's doing at this point. All right, so. Uh, here's what's left of the year in film. Uh, in the month of September is a dumpster fire that no where no one will see anything. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we've got uh, God oh, bless. The, I don't know September. The Predator's probably going to suck. I mean, The Nun might do okay. You have, the Predator's uh, going to suck. You have Jennifer Garner. See it. You have Jennifer Garner plays the Punisher, otherwise known Which as Peppermint. Bomb. 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 
Uh, White Boy Rick looks pretty good. I don't know if anyone's going to go see it, but you know, it's getting a wide release. Um, let's see, Fahrenheit eleven nine, the house. With yeah, the, the house. It, it, yeah, the house with the clock in its walls might sneak up on some people. That one might be all right. Yeah, I have no interest in it. Neither do my kids. But my wife is like that. My wife, every time she's seen the trailer for that, she's like, "Oh, I want to take the kids to that one," and they keep telling her no. Uh, <laughs> force them. Force them. Uh, at the end of September, you have Hellfest, Little Women, Night School, and Smallfoot. Night School will probably do okay. It's got Kevin Hart in it, and I know how much you hate Kevin Hart, but if you could control I yourself really for a do. moment. You know, but, Kevin, uh, Kevin I mean, look, my hatred of him notwithstanding, there he are people draws. who think he's funny, and we'll see it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not in, not in denial about this. I'm in <laughs> confusion, but I, <laughs> I don't get it, but I know it happens. Um, so, again, if they shoot it for a nickel and they make ten cents, they'll be all right. Yep. Uh, Smallfoot's a, a, an animated film from Warner Brothers that I think my kids have said they wanted to see. I have no interest in it, but, you know, whatever. Um, October, you start off with uh, two pretty pretty big heavy hitters, uh, depending on, you know, what happens. You've got A Star is Born, which is the uh, Lady Gaga movie, which actually looks pretty interesting. Then you have Venom. Oh, yeah, that's Bradley Cooper in Lady Gaga. I finally saw a trailer for that, and, I mean, it looks a touch, like, maudlin for my taste mm-hmm. but could be it could be very well executed yep. and then you have you, again you have venom which is going to just burn burn <laughs> uh bad times at the el royale looks fun and then you have goosebumps goosebumps 2 haunted halloween which you know i'm sure that the kids will come out for that one uh you've got halloween 2018 which is essentially halloween 2 um the hate you give i don't know what that is and serenity it's and, nothing and then October ends with Hunter Killer, Indivisible, Johnny English Strikes Again, and Stuck. I have no idea what any of those are. So Yeah, neither do I. Um, November has the Queen biopic, Bohemian Rhapsody, and then the Nutcracker in the Four Realms, which, you're welcome, I took off the schedule. God, I am so, like, anything. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, the only big release in, like, all of November, I think, is going to, well... You're gonna have Ralph. You're gonna have uh, you know, Wreck It Ralph. Well, you got. Well, hang on. Before you, you've got the Grinch, which that's gonna yeah, be a big which one. Yeah, the big one. Um, now competing at that same time, you have a horror movie called Overlord, and then which you know I've seen the trailers for it, meh. And then you have the Girl in the seen Spider's the trailer Web. For that yet? Then oh no, I did. I did that one. That's the one that I kept waiting for, like the Wolfenstein logo to pop up on. That yeah. looks so <laughs> stupid, but I think um, it's like deliberate. Oh, then you have Fantastic Beast sequel. Right. Um, Which will probably not do all that well because suddenly Johnny Depp has to actually do stuff apart from show up at the end for a cameo. Right. Then you have, thing, you have a loaded Thanksgiving weekend. You have Creed Two, Ralph Breaks Ugh. the Internet, Robin Hood, and then some other stuff like Second Act and Green Book. Um, and that is the end of November. And then December has something called The Silence. and um, We've got Mortal Engines, which is uh, directed by, oh gosh... Uh, Lost it. Christian Rivers. Um, okay, this is the Peter Jackson, Fran Walsh thing, uh, which I, I initially yeah. had this on the schedule, but I, I need the dates, so I took it I off. I saw the trailer for that. I don't know what attracted you to it. Um, Peter Jackson. Weird, but all right. <laughs> and then, of course, it's up against Into the Spider-Verse, which, is, which had the... Uh, <laughs> it's turned my daughter into a huge Spider-Gwen fan. Uh, Mary Poppins Returns got moved up. I've taken it off the list. We're not going to review it, uh, but I'll be out. I'm going to end up seeing it because that's what my daughter wants to do for her birthday. Oh, I finally saw the trailer for that and went, "Thank God, I'm not. I don't have to view this." <laughs> and then they, for some odd reason, they loaded up the Christmas releases with Alita: Battle Angel, which moved from the summer to, to the 21st of December. Aquaman. I, they must. They must have no faith in that movie. Just straight up none. <laughs> Uh, we've got Aquaman, Bumblebee, Holmes and Watson, and Welcome to Marwin. I mean, look, I don't want to see all of those, but I could. But there's an argument for seeing most of them. Like my my no, wife saw isn't. my wife saw the uh, trailer for Welcome to Marwin and was like, "We need to go see that." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be busy that weekend." I don't think I've seen the trailer for that yet, but so that's it. Um, anything else? Um. You know, again, like, I was deeply disappointed with the majority of the summer films this year, but there were some good ones kind of sprinkled throughout in there. 
Um, I'm grateful that, you know, I get some time off because there's nothing coming out and there's not. Man, again, this show is like ruined my ability to view movies. Just. <laughs> I can't. I, anytime I don't have to watch something, it's like, oh, thank heavens. But it's not like, oh, there's something else out that I want to see. It's just I don't have to put myself through this. <laughs> I love you, Robert. All right. Uh, so, so yes, there's not a whole lot of damn you Hollywoods coming up anytime soon, but we do have some other stuff for you. We have a, a TV party for Legion Season 2 next week. Uh, this week, actually, we have we, we threw up an extra show. We've got Weeds the entire season. Myself and Sean Comer are going to uh, bust out that one since I've just, you know, binge-watched the entire thing in a matter of, like, weeks. We're going to do an on-trial for the Pamela Anderson movie Barbed Wire. Uh, Jesse and I are going to do a TV party for Cloak & Dagger. Uh, we have the one Damn You Hollywood for The Predator. Um, by that point, Iron Fist will have come out. We'll do a TV party for Season 2. And then myself and Jesse will do a TV party for Ozark Season 2. Uh, we've got lots of comics. We've got lots of metal albums. We've got... Uh, we've, I, I, we also... I should throw this on there. David Wright asked me, a friend of the show, asked if we could do a TV party for Disenchantment. So we're going to sneak that into the September schedule. And if Sean Comer can get some... Uh, let uh, me know when. I might be on that one, because I'm enjoying Disenchantment so far. Oh, are you? Uh, I might have to move the date then, because you're busy that night. Oh, well, no. Uh, look, if that's his thing, and that's like... If it conflicts with my schedule, I am not a required participant for that. So if you've got it, go for it. Just do your thing, man. Um, I mean, no, it's not a huge deal. Uh, 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 I mean, look, it, my point there is, if I'm free, I'm happy to be on if... You, you don't move it around on your end. Well, how uh, long? How long is the is usually is the four hundred one ground pound show? Are you, can you be done by like nine nine thirty? Depending on what we're talking about specifically, the show date is tentatively September second. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I'll let you know when uh, I'll have a deeper look at the what's going on around that particular date, and we'll have a look at it. So we'll right. see. The other TV party that I threw on the schedule just for shits and giggles, I haven't even actually watched it yet, but it's getting a lot of uh, critical complaints for one reason or another, so where, the, where, there are, where there are complaints and controversy, there's me to exploit it. Uh, Insatiable, season one. We might, we might actually get a panel of uh, girls that Sean Comer knows on there to discuss it. They have some opinions from what I've been told, so we'll see how that goes. And that's pretty much the month of September for you. Do your thing. All right, this past Sunday, the 411 Ground and Pound radio show was back in action. We previewed UFC Fight Night 135. It's uh, it's a card. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I've... A few other people, I mean, Jeff kind of got on me for being overly negative about it. I've seen a few people say that they're... They're not, you know, overly excited for it, but eh, but hey, it's you know, it, it, I mean, I, as a what do they say, like low key, it's low key, pretty good. I disagree with that assessment, but I'm prepared to be wrong, and in fact, I hope I am because I have to sit through this thing. So I hope I'm wrong. But we previewed that event, so you can listen to that. Uh, this coming Sunday is just a review of that event, and then the week after that, we're previewing UFC 228, which is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know about that card. I mean, your main event is Tyron Woodley and Darren Till. Your co-main is Valentina Shevchenko and Nico Montano. Uh, I don't know. It, it's. I feel pretty confident saying it's not really going to draw all that well. Um, but uh, I'm leery of that in execution as well. It's uh, it's just kind of an yeah thing. So, <laughs> in a couple of weeks, we'll preview it, and I'll see if I still feel the same way by then. Uh, other than that, again, I think uh, we've touched on everything I might be doing in the near future, so that's it for me, and that's it for Mark. So to everyone who listened to our relatively... Con hey, we got through a show real in concise fashion. I mean, y yay us, you know? And that was with, my babbling about, that was with me babbling about my son. Well, we skipped, over an, we skipped over an entire segment that we usually do where I yell at critics. And to be fair, that takes a lot of time because they're so bad at their job. <laughs> 
All right, folks. If you enjoy Damn You Hollywood and are like, well, when's the next one? We'll see you in a couple of weeks for The Predator. Ugh. <laughs> I was all happy. I was so happy to go into my break, and then all of a sudden you just reminded me of that. How dare you? Indeed. How dare you? <laughs> All right, folks. For Robert Winfrey, I'm your mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radledge. Be well, be safe, and behave.